Hey everyone, this is going to be part of a series all about kettlebells and my adventures with kettlebells. This video is not sponsored by any company other than my own, DonOneal.com. We sell wonderful G clay prints of my, grand my grandfather's art. Go check it out. We have a over a hundred online. I first started lifting kettlebells in 2013, but I had no idea what I was doing and no idea what I was buying. So I kind of had to discover stuff as I went along. So I'm going to share a bit about what purchases I made, uh, the good, the bad, things I've learned. So first I want to address what is a kettlebell. A kettlebell is a very simple idea. It's a cannonball with this large handle on it. Now it's a fitness tool that's used for a variety of different lifts. It's a little bit different than a barbell and a, and a dumbbell. You generally don't do the same things you would do on either one of those with a kettlebell. Now, with the different types of kettlebell lifting, the primary difference, or a primary difference, is that kettlebell lifting is used for ballistic repetitions. There's more than that as well, but generally every type of kettlebell lifting somehow includes ballistic repetitions. Well, what does that mean? You swing these things around. You swing them with velocity. Um, and that, comes to some important design considerations. You're gonna want a kettlebell that's not going to screw your hand up. I started with a cap kettlebell that I bought at a local health store. Um, this brand is kind of popular because it's on Amazon and it's been on Amazon for a number of years. I bought this back in 2013. This is 25 pounds. As you can see, there are many little scuffs on it. I believe this kettlebell uh, is an iron kettlebell which has been coated in, with enamel, which is really not a good mix because it tends to uh, flake and chip. I then bought uh, a couple of 45 pound kettlebells from this company, Cap, uh, which are totally beat up. And I believe the reason why is because I would do them with uh, double work. Um, and then I bought a 60 pound, which is never seen doubles. And it's mostly every bit is new is the day I got it, which is a couple of years ago. I consider this type of kettlebell to be the bottom end of acceptable. So the big difference between competition style kettlebells and hard style kettlebells is that hard style kettlebells are different sizes based on weight. As the weight gets heavier, the, the kettlebell gets larger. Competition are all the same. Generally the competition are most useful in kettlebell sport where you're practicing these very precise movements and you don't have to relearn the movement to, to learn a, a different weight. It just gets heavier, the weight doesn't get larger. So the next style of kettlebell I bought, I was a bit of a splurge. It was by a smaller company made by Valerie Fedorenko, uh, who's an absolute legend in the sport of kettlebell lifting and one of the very first to bring them to the United States. Um, this is a competition style. For a while, I wanted to do that style of lifting. I don't do it now, uh, and I, I don't really like doing it. I prefer the hard style. Now, this Valerie Fedorenko Precision Kettlebell is really nice. Definitely one of the nicest I own, and you can make a case it's the nicest one that I own. Uh, the downside is the company's no longer producing kettlebells. Their website's no longer active, and it's not a, uh, and, and the shipping was very expensive. From what I understand, Rogue makes something very, very similar to this in, in likely similar designs. Um, but what's nice about this, it's very comfortable for snatching to hold it up like this is good. It has these flat ridges on it, which is a really nice design feature. And it's actually one that I think every kettlebell should have is, are these flat ridges. Just as you're holding it up, it presses on the wrist differently. It's a flat press on the wrist versus a concave uh, press on the wrist. Um, but this is definitely nice. The downside with this one was the incredible shipping cost. So uh, looking back, this was an $80 kettlebell, which is already expensive. It's a 35 pound or 16 kilogram kettlebell. And it's an already expensive kettlebell. And then there was like a $50 shipping charge. So it was like 130 bucks to get this one, which uh, that was a lot. And was it worth 130 bucks? Not really, I don't think it was. Um, uh, however, if this company would have been sold locally and this was only 80, I think that would have been much better, even though that's still on the very high side. But this is absolutely nice. It's practically flawless. The only things on it are my, when my skin gets rubbed off on it. It has a bit of a powder coat. Uh, it's not rough at all. Um, 
This is definitely good. There was a quote I remember reading that said, if, if Bruce Wayne lifted kettlebells, it would be uh, Valerie Fedorenko precision kettlebells. And that's no joke just because he could afford them. They're very expensive. To get a full set in this, you're looking at thousands of dollars. So the next one I bought was from a local gym supply company called Diamond Pro. The best thing about this one was the price. It was only over a little over a dollar a pound. I think it was a dollar ten cents a pound. Uh, this guy's 32 kilograms, so it's 70 pounds. Uh, so it's pretty heavy. It's been very good. The quality has been pretty damn good about everything. Uh, there's been no hardly any scuffs. The uh, no seams in the handle, which is really important. You don't want seams in the handle at all. And I was, for a while, I was using this thing every single day for Simple and Sinister, and it was like a dream. I, it would, once again, it would be better if it had the little indentations that the Valerie Fedorenko one had. Uh, and this, for a while, this little groove was cutting into my arm, but nothing bad. So bang for the buck, this Diamond Pro, I actually put in first place. The reason why is uh, it's a 70 pound kettlebell, a 32 kilogram kettlebell for $80, you're, you're gonna have a really hard time beating that without having serious compromises in quality. The handle's good, but it could be a little better. The coating's good, but it could be better, but you're probably gonna have a hard time beating it on price. So as I was moving up in weight, the next one I bought was from an online company, Kettlebell King Space out of Texas. This one's really nice. It has a lifetime warranty. Uh, it was expensive though. So this guy is 40 kilograms or 88 pounds. It's pretty heavy. I can hardly carry it for long. The handle is wonderful. The coating is perfect. It's a little bit smoother than the other one. It's still a powder coat, but it's more like a chalk surface than a, uh, than a, a the grit's finer. The coating is held up very well. I don't use it a lot because there's not a lot of things you can reliably do with an 88 pound kettlebell, but I do use it. It's been wonderful. So the Kettlebell King kettlebell is really good if you do not have a local supplier. Uh, I have a local one and I want to really compare this one because I've heard so many great things about it with my local one. And I will tell you this, uh, this one's better, but it costs a lot more. The 40 kilogram powder coat kettlebell from Kettlebell Kings is $162. Now that includes shipping it to you, uh, which a lot of companies I notice they don't include the shipping on there, so it looks a lot cheaper than you go out of shipping, and it's way more expensive. So there's some things that you're definitely going to want to take into consideration when shopping for kettlebells. First, avoid plastic kettlebells, kettlebells with concrete. Get yourself a cast iron or steel kettlebell. It costs a little bit more, but the quality is much much higher, and longevity is much much greater. Second. If at all possible, avoid a kettlebell with an enamel coating. Four, three out of the four enamel kettlebells I've had have chipped horribly on me, have cut my hands. Three, check your local gym supply store and see what they have before shopping online. A lot of times, because you don't have to pay for shipping in that case, you can get a high quality kettlebell and save a considerable amount of money. However, if you don't have a gym supply store near you, you're gonna have to shop online. I've discovered most sporting goods stores that I've been in don't really have a great kettlebell selection. The ones they have are, I think, are inferior brands and inferior uh, designs. So you're gonna have to, you have to do a little bit more shopping. Four, if you're shopping online, you wanna make sure that the sh price of the shipping is included with the price of the bell to get an accurate representation. A really good example of this is the powder coat kettlebell from Kettlebell Kings, a 32 kilogram, costs $110. From Dragon Door, it's $154 which is a lot more, plus to ship it to me costs an extra 50, as with the Kettlebell Kings, uh, it's already included in the price. That's a massive difference if you're shopping. Five, look for other reviews and see what other people are also working with. This is my experience in dealing with these brands. Uh, there are some that I definitely have uh, an affinity to over others. So, if I had to shop all over again for myself, how would I do it differently? I would have never bought the enamel kettlebells. I don't know why they're manufactured. They break, they chip, they cut your hands. It's not worth doing. I would have gone straight to the powder coats. I recommend you do that as well. If you don't like the powder coats, get a cast iron from a really good brand. Likewise, I wouldn't have bought the super high-end boutique Valerie Federico Precision kettlebells. While they are fantastic, they were very expensive. And for the same amount of money, I could have got something that was maybe not quite as good, but I would have saved 50% or more. I hope that could help you. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you have any experience with these brands, 
please leave a comment below. This is just the first part in the series. I plan to go in further in depth with my favorite programs, the different systems. So take a look, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned.